each cycle you are actually removing an asset of core A and at the same time you are producing energy. There is energy there and there is energy there. So beta oxidation is going to produce a large amount of energy and this energy is going to be produced in form of reduced equivalent, which is FAD and energy rich. So you would be able to show, calculate how much energy is produced from the fatty acid by simply knowing how many carbons this fatty acid has. Because from each cycle, this cycle is going to produce an acetyl CoA, which is also going to produce FAD and energy H. You can put all those together and calculate how much it is. In a nutshell, this is how beta oxidation occurs. So when you're explaining that question, guys, illustrate this once, then you explain that this will undergo beta oxidation. Tell us how many cycles it will undergo. Is that okay? This is the process of beta oxidation. Yes? Uh, yes. Yeah, sir. Yeah. So what for the ATP that was used in the first uh Okay, well, that's good. That's a very good question. I think I should actually even be able to show you how to calculate the energy so that you see. It's up to you. You can say the net energy. She's prepared. There was another question? I think it's the same question. Same question, fine. So now that we have seen how energy is generated in the oxidation. I want to show you a quick way of how to calculate energy. You see, when you have a fatty acid with 16 carbons, people really struggle to see how this fatty acid is going to be broken down in 7 cycles, not 8 cycles. Right? But here is what is happening. So, this fatty acid, let's quickly just, uh, I think I can grab this, right? And then I show you how that is going to happen so that we can quickly work out how the numbers are actually going to happen. So, let me remove this. And then I show the whole length of fatty acid. And then we actually see how many cycles it want to go. Then we bring up an equation for that. So let's draw palmitic acid. The whole long palmitic acid. CH3, CH2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 40 acid with 16 carbons. Right? Now, we said that in beta oxidation, you are actually removing sequentially acetyl CoA from each cycle. So, what is going to happen if this molecule undergoes beta oxidation? It will remove the first carbon in cycle number one, right? Then you remain with this. The next cycle remove that. The next cycle that. The other cycle that. The other cycle. The other cycle. So you see, you will have had one cycle, two cycles, second cycle, third cycle. So this is the third cycle, rather. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six cycle, right? Then you have the fatty acid with fatty acid for every four carbons. 
instead of this undergoing two reactions, when this has been split into two, you have an ester of OK and another ester of OK. You see what is happening? So this is going to undergo seven cycles, not eight. Do you see that? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because the particle ester of OK with four couples is not four divided by two, but it's just one cycle. You see what I mean? This one is being split into two. Do you get the sense? Is that okay? No. But it's okay. CH3, CH2, CH2. When you have this fatty SL for A, for it to undergo the, the beta oxidation, it won't undergo two cycles, even if it has four couples. Because when it undergoes beta oxidation, what will happen is that you end up with this beta keto SL, beta keto SL, and the last reaction, theolytic cleavage will bring out that acetal for A and that acetal for A. This is just one cycle. Do you see that? So, what this means is that if you have the fatty SL for A with 16 couples, instead of it being 16 divided by 2 equal to 8, it's not the case. Is that clear? It's actually giving you 7. So there is a formula that you use to calculate how many cycles the fatty acid undergo. And it's like this. You just say number of carbon divided by 2 minus 1. Particularly if the acid of cocaine, which is subtracted, is equal to the cycle that you have. Which means that if you have a fatty acid of A with 16, it's going to be 16 over 2 minus 1, which is going to be 8 minus 1, 7 cycles. This other one will be an acid of A. You see why this is being put as an acid of A. If it was 18, it's going to be 18 divided by 2, which is 9 minus 1. It's going to undergo in cycles. Do you see that? Now, when it comes to energy generation, here is the energy that is produced. You are dying that from each cycle, you are producing one energy H plus H plus, one FADH2, and one acetal. Okay, right? Remember? But this last reaction is actually producing two acetal coas. Right? So the number of acetal coas is going to be equal to the number of carbons divided by two. That's why we're saying if the number of cycles plus one will be equal to the acetal coas. So if you are dealing with a fatty acid SL coa with 16 carbons, the number of acetal coa is going to be 16 divided by 2, which is 8. Well, the number of FAD, 7, number of NAD is going to be 7. Because here, you're producing an acetal OA and another acetal OA. Do you see that? So, cycles plus 1 is going to give you the number of acetal OA. Do you see that? So, this can be worked out. Because you are dying that based on your value of the energy from NADH, if you say this NADH is giving you 2.5, right? ATPs, then you have 7 times 2.5 ATPs there. This FAD is giving you 1.5, then you have 1.5 multiplied by FAD as your energy there, isn't it? Then this means that from your TCA cycle, the acetyl CoA 
is not going to produce 12 since you put it at 2.5, but it's going to be 10, right? Remember from the TCA cycle, if you put your value of FAG and energy at 2.5 and 1.5, the amount of ATP produced from acetal of 4K was what? 10. If you put it at 3, it was giving you 12. You see what I mean? This is able to be calculated from the TCA cycle, and I think we did this. So, how much energy therefore is this? Can somebody calculate for me? 2.5 multiplied by 7. 17.5. 17.5. piece plus what? 10.5, right? Is this 10.5? Yes. It is, right? Yes. Then plus 8 times 10, which is 80. 80. Total. What's the total? 108 ATP in total and since in your activation reaction you know since you put in two ATPs you can even go on and subtract minus two ATPs you have one zero six is this okay guys and I'll take you by your word that we have completed this fine 106 ATP from one molecule of palmitic acid. Guys, it just tells you that a fatty acid generates a lot of energy. One fatty acid of A produces 106 ATP. And I think this we were able to explain. We said that it is because the fatty acid is highly reduced. It's highly reduced and it's highly anhydrous. The result is that from one gram of a fatty acid, you are able to produce nine kilocalories per gram of anything. Of anything. Of anything. While one gram of a protein and one gram of a carbohydrate will give you four kilocalories per gram. <coughs> Fatty acids or lipids would have higher energy, they say. Fatty acids have higher energy than carbohydrates and protein because they are highly anhydrous and highly reduced. Is that okay? This is how a fatty acid with an even number of carbons would undergo beta oxidation. In this one. What is going to work? Why is it that if a fatty acid has an even number of carbons, it gives you more energy than a fatty acid with an odd number of carbons? Right? Those are some of the questions that would be asked. Why is it that an even, a fatty acid with an even number of carbons gives you more energy than a fatty acid with an odd number of carbons? Let's give an example. This one we have shown that if it has 16 carbons, it gave us 108. What if it has 17? This fatty acid has 17 carbons. If a fatty acid has 17 carbons, it is going to undergo beta oxidation normally until you have a moiety with 5 carbons at the end. When this moiety has 5 carbons, which has a made CH2, 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 CO4. Okay. This one would undergo one cycle as well. 